What up, everybody? Welcome to the Black Bell Barber podcast, the first podcast that talks about entrepreneurship for barber. As you know, your chair, it is your business. I have here my beautiful wife, my co-host. Hi, guys. And this podcast is sponsored by Invictus Podcast Studios. And today we have a class, a class full of education, full of content that will help you to change the way you view uh, the chair, the chair you work, the chair, it is your business. Always think that chair, it is your business. So today, we're going to be talking about how can you, as a barber, uh, be fully booked, having more clients, uh, increase your revenue. How can you do that? So we're going to be sharing here everything we have done that worked for us. We are fully booked today. We are 100% of our barbers are fully booked. So we're going to share here really important things. So listen up and apply in your life. So first thing is, how can you increase the total numbers of clients you serve? First one is referral. Referral. What I do and what I used to do to, to became fully booked. Nowadays, I'm 100% booked. Every single client that were in my chair, I ask for a referral. I ask them if they did like the haircut, can you please refer me to, uh, if you did like the haircut, can you please me refer to someone that you know? And always, always someone next day or next week or next month will come and say, uh, John mentioned your name, that you're a great barber, and here I am. And that person became, uh, became a client and became a friend, created a relationship and all that. So refer is one of the most powerful tools that you can have behind the chair as, as a barber. To increase right? your clientele, increase. for sure. When you refer someone, usually um, the person won't question. If you see a post on Instagram, an ad, you don't know that person. But if your best friend told you, go to this barber, he's amazing. You don't even question. You don't even look any anything else you just say okay what's his phone how do i book an you might not even look at for reviews <laughs> yeah you, <laughs> you just know? go so referral trust. is the most powerful one and i think that was very important to grow our business uh our clients a lot of them come by referral and the other half let's say come through google reviews because they search on google they see our reviews through social media but the most powerful one is Referral referrals. and Google reviews. But referrals, it's the person won't question. Uh -huh. They will just come. It's, it's still number one. It's still the number one channel that you can bring clients to your chair. Yes. Because that, that, that person is already like yours. You know, if their uh, father or friend say, go to John or go to Tico, they definitely will come. You know, because they, they already like, if my father went there, if my friend went there, because that barber is good. And I think barbers shouldn't be afraid of asking for a referral. Say, hey, you, as you said, you like my, my service, you would like the haircut. You know, here's a couple cards if you can refer someone. And you can even offer something to that person, you know, each client that you refer to me, whatever, create something that works for you. Some promotion. To motivate or... that client to be your, <laughs> your adver advertising. And it's free. Actually, I, g I have a story on top of that, remember? Yes. <laughs> I used to be a hairstylist, and I used to do unisex, like women, women's and, and guys, right, and, and men's. And I decided in 2010 to only be a barber. I became a barber, but I had to do that transition. But I did have women's and guys, but I had less less men's so the money the revenue that i was making those guys wouldn't pay my bills once i did that transition i had to come up with a strategy and i call all, all the girls i call all the women and say from now on i'm a barber i'm only gonna cut guys and then i had to create a strategy that i came up with this idea that i was every single client that i have back then at a time at that time I told each one of them, if you bring me someone, next time you come, your haircut will be for free. And guess what? I was fully booked in the first week. <laughs> fully <laughs> Who booked. Who doesn't want I, free I double right? my, my revenue. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody wants. I'm not saying you wanna, you, you're you going to do something for free, but give, give a promotion like 15%, 30% off. Anything that it's, it's 
possible for you, you know? Or offer the beard. Say, yeah, hey, if you come and you bring a friend, uh, you just pay for the haircut, you get a free beard service, free, free beard trim or something, you know, to motivate. Because you're not doing this forever. You're using this as a tool to grow your clientele. And then in if you do that, you can get booked faster than if you don't do it. And then in two, three months, you'll be booked. Then you don't need to keep doing the free services anymore. But it's the tool to recognize that client, to give him something because he's helping you in growing your clientele. Yes, recognition. Recognize what that client has done for you. So actually, he wore uh, a Canva, right? Walking out there like a marketing Canva for you. Market. For sure. Marketing? Yep. Marketing Canva, walking out there and talking about you, talking about the, the amazing barber you are. So refer is one of the most important uh, way of build up your clientele and also retention, client retention. Mm -hmm. If you do have a, a client in your chair, you, he you have to give him the best out of you. You know, give your best because not only being the best hair cutter, but being the best person to actually uh, talk to that person, you know, communicate with that person, be someone that you dare for that person. Go always go an extra mile for that client because what is going to retain the client in your chair is not only about the haircut. It's not only the haircut anymore. You know, it's that communication. It's who you are because at the first time he comes to you is because of the haircut because he might don't know you. But he know oh he does a great haircut. But if you're a guy that you always negative, if you're a guy that you if you don't execute an excellent haircut as well, he will you not he will ne never come back next month to you. So client retention, it's something that you you can't uh, you can't miss. You have to give your best so that client come back to you. So what do you think? I noticed that. In our team, the barbers that have bigger retention are not the ones that do the perfect haircuts because in the beginning they're still learning. So their haircuts is not the perfect haircut, but their personality, how they treat the client, uh, being approachable, being in a good mood and talking and asking questions. Hey, what do you do for work? Oh, nice. What do you do on the weekends? And then they engage in a very nice conversation with that client. That's what made them have a higher retention rate compared to barbers that just performed the haircut, but they were quiet. They were just there focused on the haircut. So for sure, retention is important because imagine that it's not easy to bring a client to your chair. It's not easy to have someone going to you instead of their old barber. If he decided to look for a new barber and then he sits in your chair and he never comes back, yeah. then you're not growing your clientele. You have that chance. One, one, one chance. One chance. Only one chance. Exactly. To retain that person. And if you don't have a good retention, you never grow your clientele because you're always trying to attract new clients that don't come back. But you not retain the old ones. It's not sustainable. You're always chasing new clients, new clients, new clients. And if you retain your clients, so next month you have the new ones that will be coming plus the ones that came last month. And then it gets a snowball effect and it just grows bigger and bigger and bigger. I even had an uh, example of barbers that started cutting hair with us, uh, beginners. So they started at the same time, that same month, same day. The, the the skills level that they had were the same, but I I I noticed that the guy that was talking more to their clients, the clients were coming back more towards him than the other guy. So the guy has less retention, and retention is not only about giving that great haircut, like I said, right? Uh, I forgot. Can you continue? <laughs> <laughs> were you about to say <laughs> I was about to say something else but I will, I will remember okay yeah You're, that's true that the barbers that worked in our team that had better communication oh, skills I remember okay go ahead <laughs> I remember uh, the thing is sometimes the client you are cutting their hair they don't know what going through your mind right they could be thinking if you're quiet even if you give them a great haircut 
But if you are quiet all day, <laughs> I say, during those the time that you're cutting their hair, they don't know if you are sad. They don't know if you lost passion for what you do and you are there because you were forced and you are there just to make the money and pay the bills. If you are angry, if you are unhappy in what you do. So they don't know that unless you speak out, unless you talk to them. They, and then next time they will come, they come not because the haircut you have done, but it's the, ha- but it's the person that you show them, mm-hmm. you know. So that's that's what I was going to say. Okay. Yeah, we had a uh, couple situations with barbers that didn't speak English. So they they didn't know the language and they had a language barrier and we got bad reviews because the clients felt I don't know they felt that the barber didn't do a good job even though they did but the problem was not the haircut the problem was not communicating the person was there quiet with a face that the client interpreted that this person is in a bad mood this person as you said doesn't like what he's doing and it wasn't true it was just that the person didn't know how to speak english many things can go wrong because you without communication yes for sure what else do you have? Reduce time need per clients. What happened is, uh, since you you are barber, you work uh, as a ten ninety nine, like you are self employed. You are self employed, and you are there, and you think, oh, I'm gonna take as much time I I can. I'm on a, my comfort zone. I'm gonna do this haircut in one hour, maybe one hour and ten, one hour and fifteen minutes. But think about it. If you work from eight to five, you can only serve like eight clients. But what about if you can improve your skills, can give, be more faster and be more productive doing 30 minutes haircuts? Mm-hmm. Your revenue, let's say you're, doing, you're making 500 right now, you're gonna be making $1,000 once you cut hair in 30 minutes. So time, it does help to, and nowadays, especially the clients, they don't have that much time to stay in your chair. People doesn't have patience anymore. You know, when you buy something on Amazon and you want for right now, and you're kind of anxious and like, where's my, where's my product? Where's my the thing? I, I'm like that. So once I ordered something on Amazon, I'm, I'm like desperate to have it. So nowadays, the time pace is. So everything so fast and people has a lot of responsibilities let's say a father he has his kids wife work and other things going on he doesn't want to sit there for one hour one hour and a half they want to just i had complaints that before that in our, in our shop that people that wow the haircut was amazing but man i can't stay here for one hour one hour and a half that happened with one of beginners. our beginners barbers mm-hmm. so it and just I, happened um last week or two weeks ago a client came and then the, i told him the haircut would take one hour because he it's a barber stay. that takes longer right well Mo- n- all our barbers cut in 30 minutes but we give them time to get to <laughs> to that time frame of 30 minutes to execute the perfect haircut and one of our barbers is still not in that time frame and then i said oh, mm-hmm. okay it's gonna be one hour and he was like one hour I can't stay here for one hour. He was mad. <laughs> so that's perfectly what you're saying. People don't have that much time. But you need to understand people doesn't have time. We need we live in a days that everything's going so fast and they need everything quickly. But also you can't execute a haircut with quality in 30 minutes. Everybody's preaching that right now. All barbershop owners, people that I know, people courses that I go, seminars, they're preaching that time. You can, if you increase your um, speed and your skills, you develop your skills, you can develop, you can execute on a haircut, great haircut in 30 minutes. You can do that. That's totally possible. And I think this connects to serving more clients, meaning you're growing your clientele faster. Because then you, you're you seeing more people and these people will bring more people. So you become fully booked much faster. If you see eight people a day versus you see 15, 16 people. And you connect referrals with the time. So you double up your clients, you, the clients that you're serving. Mm-hmm. And then you, re, you ask for referrals for each one of them. So before it was eight. Now you're serving, let's say, 16 uh 
clients a clients day. a day. Now you can ask for 16 referrals. Can right. imagine 16 of those guys refer someone to you. So you double up your clientele. Three months if you do that. It's yes. you know, increased. If the you're amount. consistent, yes. If for you're sure. consistent. In you three have. months, you can grow your clientele pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Tip for you, write it down. All this, everything that we, we are sharing here and apply definitely will help you. It, it did help us. How can you increase the total revenue in services? Rebook and upsell future service. What happened is uh, sometimes you're so used to the client sitting in your chair and you are talk and you're talking and you're distracted. Distractive? Distracted. Distracted. You, you are distracted and you, the time goes on, you cut that client's hair, but you didn't even thought about offering an extra service because that service could be an add-on in your revenue, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I see a lot of that, you know? You already let I see a lot of people, barbers, even in, in the barbershop, at the Invictus Barbershop. I see the barber, and of course I come and I train, I guide them. You should do this and do that. Let's let's train, let's practice. And I give her a total, uh, I kind of guide my guys. But if the clients come to you for a haircut and you do have time, an extra 30 minutes or an hour, let's say you only serve two clients per that day and you have the whole day free and w someone whack walk in and ask for a haircut but he needs his beer done why not offering you are losing money you are there already you know you're far from your family we use that time wisely offering a uh, service offer offer a future service meaning anything and if you don't have those services make sure you add services that is going to be add-ons. You know, will definitely will help you increase, uh, increase the total yeah. revenue you do. For you know, sure. per month, per week. Some of the services that can be added as an add-on. So, for example, eyebrows, uh, waxing the nose and ears. A lot of barbers are doing that. The black mask, the charcoal mask. Um, do upgrades in the beard service. So I see barbers using the steamer to do a, a better experience with a hot towel. So there are so many things you can create as an add-on. And that that way you can increase how much money you're making. And then your clients will love. Because, of course, you're not going to offer something they don't need. Uh, create new ways to do, let's say, head shaves. Instead of just going with the clipper, why not use the razor and the towel and, you know, create treatments and offer those upgrades to your to your to your clients and i also see what you mentioned that the barber is there he doesn't have a full schedule yet he's not fully booked he's there he was the whole morning waiting for a client and then the client came great it's a walk-in and the client is just asking for a haircut but the client needs the eyebrows done he needs the beard done why not offer he say would you like to do your beard as well? I have time. Let's do it. You're not being annoying. You're not being... Because they need. You're not yeah. pushing anything that don't need. Or even the... How do you call the The henna thing yeah. in the beard. Charge extra. The Beijing. Yeah, charge extra for that. Hey, I, I see you have some patches. I can make your beard look much nicer. It's $10 extra, $15 extra. Would you like to do it? It's going to last you... X amount of days, or if you do the one that just stay for, for until they wash, just mention how it's gonna work. And Let, offer. Let's make a calculation here, math. I'm really good at math. You know. <laughs> He's not so good at math. The average of haircuts today is thirty five dollars, right? Yes. Thirty five. Let's give thirty five as an example. Let's give thirty five as an example, and you sell an extra service that you are free to do it, mm -hmm. and let's say a hot shave. With the steam and a premium, let's say you, uh, you add, do some add-on service, right? Uh, and the hot shave will be same price. Same price. Same 35. price. Plus thirty-five. Plus a, uh, a product, right? Retail. Correct. Retail product. Let's say. A pomade or a beer balm, beard oil. A beard oil, and your profit is five dollars. Let's mm -hmm. let's put it low. Plus five. So now. Can you see here? You're making 75 So now you're making $75 per, 
on the client, client instead of 35. You increase your ticket, you know? For sure. For sure. So think about that. You're not only cutting hair anymore. You should think about all these things that you can offer your clients, but also thinking about helping them. Mm-hmm. You, do, you don't have to push it. Just make sure they need that, you know, and explain. And one one way to sell those service is explain the benefits of it. You know, mm-hmm. how cool the hot shave it is at your shop, how what the benefits, the product that you use at, you know, the, the process, explain everything, you know. So that's... And don't don't do the mistake of doing the service without asking permission and without telling them the price. I've seen this happen a lot. We have a standard at our shop that whenever the barber offers something, hey, would you like to do your eyebrows today? Always, always, always mention the price, okay? Because then if you don't mention, the client could think it's included, it's, ser- it's a free service. So whenever you offer... Um, the way we used to to tell the customer the price, I think is a good approach. We just say, hey, hey, would you like to do your beard today? Um, I I can do your beard as well. And the client might say, yes, you know what? I want to do my beard. Say, okay, here we have a hot towel shave. So this is a process. And then you explain, we use different products. We do these, aromatic towels. It prevents ingrown hair. We're going to do a massage. It's an amazing experience. And it's $35. Would you like to do it? Um, if the person is not prepared to pay, they're going to say, oh, you know what? Next time. Maybe next time. And you say, yes, yeah, sure. When you come for your next visit, I'll happy to do it. And if the person say, yes, yeah, sure. But the person knows how much it's going to be. And also you plant the seed. He knows you you have those services and you plant the seed. And he will come back knowing that. Next time he might book it. Yes. Right? And then let's say he accepted the hot house And if he shave. says no, it's because there was a reason. Mm-hmm. He, he wasn't prepared. You know, he might think that it's too much, but next time he will see you doing somebody else and say, wow, that was cool. And then we're going to try. One thing I saw Tico doing, he doesn't do that anymore, but he used to do a lot. Since we don't have the regular beard trim, we just do the full hot house shave. Now we... we the we whole don't, process. We don't cut corners, like just lines. No, we do the whole process. In the beginning, clients were a little bit skeptical or they thought, oh, no, I'm not going to pay that much for a beard treatment. I can pay just $5 or $10, but not the full price. And then I noticed you started for, of course, some clients, not all of them. You notice that if you give them the treatment for free once, they will love and they will come back and do it. Not 100% of them came back and do it, but let's say 60% chance. So if he had the time, extra time, he didn't have a client afterwards, he would say, you know what? You've been my client for so long. I appreciate you. I'll give you a treat today. I'll give you a free hot towel shave. And, and that, then there's a game change. Yes. Most of them came back and booked for a hot shave. Yes. And even if they don't book every week, at least once a month, they definitely saw the value of the service. And you also did that with black masks. Say, uh, you would say, hey, I'll give you a free treatment today. You've been my client for so long. And then they like it. And they my come wife, back. You're a great seller. Yes. I'm a good seller. But only sell what the client needs. Don't sell things they don't need. Please don't do that. You know what happened the other day was the uh, about saying, tell them the if they ask them if they would like to do the service, but also let them know how much it is. Because one of my clients complained about a barber. That barber was my barber before, too. Uh, I remember the same experience, me and the guy. I remember I went to his barber shop and he started offering me stuff. And he goes, I wanna do, uh, want, you wanna shave your beard? I say, yes. You wanna do your nose? Yes. You wanna do this? You wanna line it up? You wanna cut your hair? You wanna do this and that? And he <laughs> At the end? At the end of the day, it was $120. And I didn't expect that because he didn't told me. He didn't told me that it was how much was each service was separately. And I was shocked. I paid, I didn't complain or anything because he did an amazing job amazing actually. did you come back i never come back but if i i mean i came back but i i already told them but i knew i said no learned i just want the a lesson. haircut yeah you know i learned the lesson and the client my client came and 
was telling me that he did the same thing with him. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, actually, I don't like that approach where you don't say how much it cost and then the customer will be surprised and might think it's too much. Don't do that offer, but also uh, mention the price in a nice way. As I explain, offer the service. Hey, you do like to do this service. Okay, let me explain how it works. Uh, no, no, no. Explain the service and say it's X amount of dollars. Let's do it. So the step is, so you ask them if they want it. Second, you explain and, and tell them all the benefits. And the third, you tell them how much it is. Yes. And they will give you a confirmation, right? Correct. Yes, I want to do it because they know the price already. And make sure right after you say the price, so, oh, it's $35. Right after, just go and say, would you like to do it? If they say yes, great, let's do it. If they say no, they say, oh, fine. Just don't let them explain too much or try to negotiate the price. Yeah. Just say, yeah, fine, um, maybe next time. And then change the subject so the customer don't feel uncomfortable because he said no to you. Yeah. He doesn't it's feel sort of okay. awkward. It's like fine. Yeah. Next time when you, you have time. Yes. Whenever you want, next time we can do it. How can you increase the total revenue in retail? Educate every client in what, why, and when, and how. So this is a, a, an opportunity to increase your, re increase your revenue as well. Because selling product, I believe that every single barber there should be selling a product in your station. Because it, let's, let's, let's don't think about the money for right now. But just thinking about the benefits you are giving to your clients, right? If they come with a oily hair or a dry scalp or anything that happened, let's say dandruff, you do have that product. You are the doctor, barber doctor. That's hair doctor. The, the, the hair doctor. The barber is the hair doctor. You are the one that will save his life. His life is already miserable because he's been going to doctors and they prescribing them a lot of stuff that doesn't work. And you do have that product because you are the hair doctor. So the benefits of that, it's an upsell product, right? You're going to make more money. You're going to help that, that person. But also you need to understand what you are selling. You need to have a good knowledge about the product you are selling, right? Yes. Do you have anything to say about it? Yes, I have. Because what happens is, who's the best person to recommend a hair product other than the barber? Who's, whose job it is to educate the customer about their hair or beard? You know the products. You know how to use it. You probably tested different brands so you know which ones are best. And you know the results the client can achieve using that product. So barbers are the best person to educate the clients on what they should be using, how often, how to apply, how, how to and whatever. And sometimes the, the client doesn't even know what they have. If they have done draft, they don't even know sometimes those red spots or a dry scalp or oily scalp. They don't know why, they don't know what kind of product. But the barber has the bird view. Mm -hmm. I call the bird view that you can see everything from the top. I, I believe that we have this obligation as a professional to at least let them know. And once you let them know, they are aware and what's going on. And, and the, 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 I mean, the question will be like this right away. What? Do I have? I have this, this, and that. Yes, and I do have the problem. Do you have anything? How can I solve this problem? And you're gonna show them the the solution. The solution. Mm -hmm. You know the product they, you already have in your station. Imagine so, you go to the doctor, and then you're in pain. There is something bothering you. The doctor knows the answer. He knows how to treat you. He knows how to solve your problem. But he decides not to tell you. How would you feel? That's the same thing when you are a barber, you know the solution, the client is expressing how unhappy he is with something in his hair or beard, and you don't say anything. Why is that? And it's once you have a good knowledge of the product as well, you have to tell them what the product is and why they should be using that product and how, and teach them how, explain why, why. Be the expert behind the chain. Tell them why and when and how they can use that product at home because when once the client leaves the shop, he's going to be the only one that can be doing on his himself to fix that, that problem. Let's say it's a dry scalp or oily scalp or anything. 
he's going to be doing, explain them why and how they do it. Let's say they, you found the perfect product for, for that client's hair. Let's say a paste, right? Oh, this paste is perfect for you because we look natural. Throughout the day, you can run the finger through the hair. We look very natural. It's not oily. Your scalp is oily already. It has lots of moisture. I don't want to put more moisture. That's how we use. How you use? You towel dry first, blow dry the product in and a little bit after. Just explain the, the, the product, how to use, when, and why. And that gives you authority also. And the clients will look at you as an expert, right? As a professional. And gives you uh, worth, not worth, uh, gives you they a, see you. a value in you. Yeah, they, they see, see much more value when you uh -huh. educate them. They see that you're knowledgeable. And that's a way of retain, retain a client's in the chat too. So like one thing is connected to, to the another. other. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. I was thinking about something, but I forgot. You just say. Where we are now, we are on the, which subject? Revenue in retail. Okay. Oh, easy. let's make a, a calculation here quick. Another one. Okay, let's say you have five dollars profit in let's a make specific like th product. Thirty dollars and you're serving thirty-five dollar for haircut and you're serving sixteen clients without the product. No, Press. just do the product. Do like just this. do the product. If you have five dollars profit, meaning it's what you take to your Times. pocket. Let's say you sell four products a day and you have five dollars product. So it's profit. It's twenty. Yes, it's twenty dollars per day. 20 Let's say you times. work five, five, uh, five days a week. So twenty times five. Twenty times five. It's a hundred dollars per week profit. Yes. It would be four hundred dollar per month. It would be four thousand eight hundred extra in a year because you sold the product. You sold the product, and the client's already there. There's so many. Uh, benefits for you as a barber when you sell a product. It's almost five thousand dollars extra a year. What would you do with extra five thousand dollars? If I give you a check of five thousand dollars, what would you do with it? It's right there in your chair. You're Op solving the problem yeah. for the client. Just open up your mouth. Mm -hmm. Don't be scared of offering. How can you increase the, your percentage, uh, how can you increase the percentage of clients that have color, shave, facials? Meaning extra services, right? Extra other services, services, other services. Can you start explaining? Yes. Yeah, so um, the only way the client will know that you have those services, it's telling them, right? There's no other way. When they sit in your chair, they have no idea what you do extra besides haircuts. They think, okay, he does haircuts, great. He has no idea. So the secret is telling your clients, educating them about everything you have to offer and offer things that would benefit that specific client. Don't offer things they don't need. Educate, educate them of every single um, service because if they say no at first, but you're already planting the seed and they now they know what you have, next time they might be thinking, his wife might be complaining about his hair is too rough or too has too, uh, uh, lots of volume. And she say, oh, I don't know about the barbershop, but I do keratin in my hair. Ask if they do, and they're going to say, oh, yeah, he mentioned that. Mm -hmm. I want to book next time. So, And by the way, if you know what the keratin treatment is, <laughs> it's a treatment that reduces volume, reduces, um, it makes the hair more silker. Silkier, silkier and silkier. more manageable mm -hmm. and a lot of guys are taking advantage of that treatment because then they can style their hair easily if they have thick hair if it's curly you can make the hair straighter so there's a lot of benefits it makes more moisturize the appearance as you and said silk too. appearance yep. it makes their life much easier when they're styling their hair Let's give them an idea what we do serve, what the services we have at the shop. We do haircuts, we do hot towel shade, meaning we line it up, we trim it, we do this full service uh, with all these products that make the skin, the skin and the hair more smooth, and we prepare the whole skin and stuff. We do offer eyebrows uh, with a straight razor. It's one price, of course. And wax. And, and wax. And we do, do, we do have wax for ears and nose. We do have keratin, fantasy colors, the different colors that is 
um, blue, whatever you want to call your hair. So we have color in, in, in different ways, right? We have the fantasy colors, we have platinum blonde. Mm -hmm. And we have semi-colors too. Whoever semi -permanent wants to Semi-permanent color. Yeah, <laughs> semi-permanent <laughs> colors. That's uh, somebody might be having a salt and pepper, gray hair. They don't like it. They're kind of shy. They are not comfortable and they want to just like give them that natural look. And we do have that too. We have what else? highlights and still talking about colors. We have the permanent color that covers 100% of the white hair or it changes the color if you want, which this, the semi-permanent doesn't do it. It just covers about 80% .80%. of the gray, just bringing the natural color back. Uh, we do black mask. We do tape. We do... Oh, hair relaxer? Oh, yeah, we do hair relaxer as It's well, not so. that often, but we do sometimes. Do you guys see how many services we keep doing those add-ons to the client? So think about it. That's mm -hmm. uh, that's a plus. Exactly. Know? So they don't have to go to another place to get those services done. They can do right there in your chair. They don't have to go, for instance, to a, a hairdresser salon to do the Brazilian keratin. Because it's usually a service offered to female clients, but male clients can benefit from it. And it's a service that it's a high ticket. It's not like the haircut. It's more expensive. So you can definitely make good money doing that. Uh, what's the other word that you say is not advice? Is the recommendation? Recommend. Could be. <laughs> I want to recommend you this. If you do know about those services, before you offer, you need to learn every single benefit and how to use the process and the risks, the, the, the uh, side effects that can happen. You need to learn about that product first before. You have to have an expertise in those products, in those services and products because that can create a huge inconvenience for your client, you know? Like um, once it happened with us with uh, Beijing. Mm -hmm. The person was allergic. The person was allergic, so it was right on our first year. Yes. So we didn't have much knowledge about it, and then we, ha we had to adopt and ask every single client if they had uh, allergies, you know, or... The something. client knew he was allergic to that product, but he didn't know we were applying that product yeah. in his face to do his beard. So it could be dangerous, so that's why you should know yep. about the side effects that could happen ask questions uh, we're not saying that to make you afraid but to make you aware that problems can happen with can chemical happen, yeah. processes especially keratin keratin relaxer is very kind of dangerous if you don't know how to apply how the the before and after uh process that you have to do it the product that you have to apply mm -hmm. so it's very important and also to the know timing how the long timing, the product yeah. should stay in the hair so make sure you learn how to properly do it yeah. so you don't have any issues so that's a great way to increase your revenue mm -hmm. so how can you increase the number of new clients we already spoke and we were talking about referrals that's number one period right so now we're going to talk about promoting yourself on social media and send dms on instagram to people are in your region in your area right i've, I've been done that for a while uh, once I opened, I opened the bar the barbershop. I used to sit in, in the bed before I go to sleep and send out messages to people around uh, the air in Coconut Creek. Everybody that popped out my screen, they lived there. I used to send them a formal message: "Hey, my name is Tico. I open. I just opened up a barbershop here near you. Uh, come and check me out. You have your first time. You have this percentage of." Uh, Discount. Uh, discount. And guess what? From 10 messages that I sent, eight was replied and people came. That's mm -hmm. why I started building my clientele. So use the social media in your favor. Don't be like the phone is there and everybody else is in the phone too. Show who you are. Show what you do. Show what you are. But it's really important when you send out those message messages. You are checking if the person is a woman, if he's a family guy, if he's an elder, elder per, a senior or younger people, younger person. So you can adjust the, message. adjust the message to each one of them. So that's really important, right? Yes. I remember we would send messages 
So if we saw a wife with kids and husband in the picture, then we would message her and say, hey, you know, uh, I would love to cut your husband's and your kid's hair. I just opened a barber shop. Here's my information. I would love to see you guys here. You have 30% off in your first visit. And it really worked. And it's free. DMs are free. <laughs> It and doesn't cost you anything. It just costs your for time. For free, yeah. You should. The reason why I'm should, uh, I'm telling you should analyze each person individually because I send out a, a message once uh, for a woman, and I, I you call her brother. I call what's up, brother? And she say I'm not a brother. I'm not because <laughs> you copy and paste you, the message. I copy and paste the message, and she and was upset she about was it. She was upset. So that's the reason. That's experience, you know. And that's something that it didn't happen. It did happen. She so I want to really prevent you to don't do that. Don't so do that. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, personalize the message. You can have a script to copy and paste, mm -hmm. but or then personalize. personalize the message based on that person um, profile. See, you know, let's say you have a senior special. And then the person is not a senior. You're going to say, hey, come to the shop. I have a senior. So they're going to say, what are you talking about? I'm not a senior. So make sure you read, check the pictures, check the person before you actually send the message. And if you do that constantly for three months, I guarantee you're going to be booked up ahead. Mm -hmm. Right? For sure. I it works. guarantee it Another works. thing that works, too, that I see you doing it too now, you keep doing is... Tico, <laughs> wherever we go, we always have business cards. I know business cards are a thing from the past. Most people don't handle business cards anymore. It still works. But it still works. So when we go to the church or when Tico goes to, to an event gym. or whatever, he's always with cards in his pocket. And then he always talks to people and say, hey, I'm a barber. I have a barber shop right here. You know, I'd love to see you there. Check our Instagram. See? And then he follow the person back, and then he starts a relationship with that person, and they always come. Always come. Always. It works. It works. Always. How can you increase client retention rates? Providing an exceptional, sir, outstanding service, creating a strong relationship. Don't think just about, oh, I'm, I'm going to give this client the best haircut ever. And if you out in good on bad mood that day if you don't even look in his eye and give him a smile that could be a big problem that he will judge you for that he will judge you that oh that person didn't even smile to me he didn't talk to me. he didn't spoke to me the whole time you know that's people judge you just because I'm looking at you and you of course we are barber we we are barber we deal with people and we have our days that we we are not happy every day things happen events happen so even if you grump that day, even if you sad or anything, that person doesn't have to pay for what's happening in your life. You know, you we 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 need to bring the to bring up the vibe of the atmosphere. We need to bring positive stuff to our clients. So that is one of the biggest things that will make the clients come back to you. The retention rate will only rise. Yeah, for sure, the relationship. Uh, people come, for, as you said, the first time they come for the haircut. The second time they come the because of you and the relationship and the bond you create. Because if you go to uh, a service provider, it could be a barber, a hairdresser, a manicure, a whatever. And you don't like the person, you won't come back. Even if the service was good, but the person is annoying, talk too much. Very or negative or always in bad mood. Whatever it might be that you didn't like about that person, you won't come back, for sure. And one of the things, one of the tips, and the last tip I'm going to have here, I'm going to give it to you, is um, always call the clients by their name whenever they come back. Because our names is the most beautiful, beautiful word we can hear, uh, listen her, hear in the whole world. So once you call that client, for, he don't he don't even mind, he don't even notice. But in subconscious, he will think about like, whoa, he remembered my name. And also call him by the name and always ask about whatever you talked about in his last uh, visit. Trying to bring it up, let's say you talked about his wife. His wife was uh, was sick, was with COVID, was with uh, flu and stuff. Ask. If his wife is okay, wow, that will be a game changer. That will increase their retention with that client. 
he will understand that you really care about really him. Really care. We have an experience that there is a restaurant that we go, and then the first time the the server asked his name, and he said, Tico, nice to meet you, okay. Every time we came back, he calls him he by his, his name. He raised his hand and said, hey, Tico. And I felt special. Yes. You Everyone know? feels special when people remember our names or remember things about us or... or Something we mention, and then they ask, hey, how is your mom? How is your husband? Last time, you know, you mentioned he was sick or something. How is his new job? You mentioned your husband got promoted. How is the new job? The person will feel really special, and they feel, okay, I'm not just a number. This person really cares about me. And I think one tool that can help you if you don't have a good memory is if you have a booking software. <laughs> Because then you can write notes about that client, and when he books the appointment, you're going to see his name, which makes it you easier. Look, you look in your phone and you know it. It makes it easier for you to remember in case you have so many clients, you're going to say, I won't remember all that information. Just put notes. Make sure you put notes about what that client likes and dislikes. There are clients that don't like to use the shaver, clients that don't like the razor because they have allergies or whatever. Make sure you put notes so you don't They like do certain product, they like certain services that they might forgot to book, right? Yeah. You can always mention all of it. Make sure you have these. If you can keep in your head, write it down. Use a booking software that can help you for sure. You have anything else to add? No, I think we shared some good, valuable tips, how you can get better results behind the chair. Increase your retention rates, increase your clientele, increase your revenue, how much money you're making. I think we shared some valuable tips here. Guys, here is what me and my wife are. This is our duty to bring education and help the barber community. I hope you guys like this episode. I hope you guys share uh, with someone that you know that needs to see, that needs to watch this video. Uh, give it a like and comment. Let me know what you what you like or, or even dislike. What uh, insights you took from this episode. And this is our duty. Uh, again, this podcast is sponsored by Invict Podcast Studios. And I'll see you guys next time. The more you learn, the more you earn. <laughs>